All right, I'm here with a very special guest, uh, quite possibly the clutchest player in baseball history, starting left fielder for the LSU baseball team, my good friend, Gavin Duga. What's up, Gavin? How you doing? What's up, man? Man, I'm good. It's, uh, it's great to, you know, actually lock down the time with you. I know you're a very busy man, so really appreciate the time. Absolutely, no doubt. I uh, really enjoyed uh, getting the opportunity to kind of hop on here and talk with you. Yeah, well, uh, you know, kind of just get starting. Um, kind of to start, I'm going to ask you, uh, what, do, what do you think it means to be clutch? Kind of I brought that up saying you, that you were the clutchest guy in baseball history, you know, as a joke. But uh, obviously against UTSA, hit a 3-2, two, two-out uh, game-tying bomb in the 12th inning. Next day you come up, hit a walk-off. Like, what is your mentality whenever you enter that kind of situation? Uh, honestly, I treat every about the same. Um, since I've been here, that's kind of been one one failure that I've faced the most is hitting coach situations, and I think that's what's been eating at me the most as a player at LSU. Um, and that's something that I took personal, kind of throughout every year that I would come back. Um, and this year, obviously, um, the clutch performances have kind of increased a little bit. But I think from to credit that is it just comes from just treating everybody about the same. Uh, no one's more big, more bigger than the other. Um, so that's just kind of kind of my focus, you know, just trying to have the same at bat, same mentality, same mindset for everything. So, I mean, I mean, even outside of that one series, I mean, it's back to back nights. But then going back to the uh, grand slam you hit early in the season, um, you know, going tied six six, you were all over social media that night, you know, mm -hmm. screaming around the base, let's go. Kind of hard to believe you take every about the same whenever you show that kind of passion. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's like so opposite of everything I've ever known from you, like uh, growing up playing ball together. Like I've known you for so long. You're always like the quiet, humble guy. And then I see you on, you know, all over Twitter, like go, screaming, like, let's F and go. Like, let's go pick it up, boys. It's yeah, pretty at the end of the day, you kind of got to uh, show a little bit of emotion whenever you come in those type of situations after. Uh, I, I think uh, before that I was like 0 for 12 or 0 for 14 or something like that, just trying to get on the hit column, you know, just trying to do what I can to help this team win. And uh, just what happened in that moment, I was able to find a pitch that I could barrel. And I think I think a little bit of emotion came out of me in that that instance because obviously it was in a big part of the game. And uh, it was just really inspiring for myself because that was my first hit of the year. So it just kind of got me going, you know. There's a little bit of extra jazz on it. Like, yeah, let's yeah, go. Like, definitely. finally, I did it. Uh -huh, for sure. Oh. I got kind of going into that. I mean, you've been red hot ever since. Um, I don't know if you're a big stat guy. I don't know how much digging you do into your own stats. Do you look at that much or not really? Uh, no, not really. All right, well, then I'm going to hype you up real quick uh, just for me. <laughs> so out of the people that qualify, you have the third highest OPS on the team at 962. You're batting 324, which is pretty impressive considering you started 0 for 12. You have six doubles and three bombs. And this is, what, 18 games. And those first three games really don't acquire to us. Like, you've been – red hot, you've been on fire. What do you kind of contribute to that? Has it been extra time in the cage? Has it been time with the coaches, maybe time in the film room, things like that? Um, there was one thing I said at the beginning of the year in an interview. Uh, I think it was actually after I hit that uh, that grand slam, um, and it kind of stuck in my mind. Um, actually, Coach Josh, Joshua Constant, you, you know him, uh, he, he brought it up in a text message with me, and he said, uh, well, he, he brought up what I said. He said, let you be you. And I pretty much said that interview. I said, uh, I just kind of relaxed a little bit and stopped trying to do too much. And I just let me be me. Um, I think that's something that I just stuck with after that and just allowed myself to kind of relax a little bit and try not to do too much in every at bat and just play the, play the game that I know how to play that I've always been playing and let my abilities do what they need to do. All right. Kind of speaking to that pressure you kind of talked on. Um, tell me about your time as a freshman, obviously coming in from a small school, going play at, you know, a SEC type powerhouse. Uh, what were kind of the adjustment period like, or even if you had any? It was absolutely crazy. The adjustment that I had to make just from the high school days to, to my freshman year, it was a, it was definitely a, a big life change in baseball and, and just in life in general, because uh, I was just open up to so many different things with just moving away from my parents, living my own. It was just a whole like eye opening experience, something I never had to deal with before. Um, I wouldn't say I was a homebody, but I was pretty close to my family. Um, I had my, my close friends and all that, but, but I was never a big uh, go out and hang out with a bunch of group of people. And that's something that I had to get used to, you know, like uh, to, for us as a team, I learned that you got to be able to kind of have that time with your teammates outside of baseball, outside of practice. And 
all those games and all that stuff. And to bond and to grow stronger, you need to be able to hang out with them and, and enjoy each other's time whenever it, baseball isn't included. And that's something I had to get used to because I really didn't do much of that in high school. Um, but yeah, that was just something crazy that I had to deal with. But the 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 speed of the game for for me as a freshman was so fast that I just really couldn't keep up. Honestly, my head was going all over the place. I remember um, my freshman year, I was we were playing at Arkansas and I was playing second base. Um, and we had two outs and the ground ball hit to the third baseman and he threw it to me uh, and I turned it over play. And with two outs. With two outs, yeah, with two outs there. And thank God the uh, – it was on ESPN actually that game and thank God they ended the uh, – like the broadcast to go into commercial before I turned the double play. Um, but I absolutely got chewed into and I don't think I played the rest of the year after that just because of that thing that, that I did. So Was that post-injury or – Yes, post injury. Yeah, we're we're gonna get to that then. Uh, but going back to as you said, like when you first got to LSU, did you think that your talent wise fit in right away, or whenever you got there, you're like, man, these guys are good. I had the well. At first, um, I I knew that I was talented enough to play there, um, because I knew they recruited me for a reason. Um, but whenever I first uh, took my first ground ball at the field, I was standing next to Josh Smith. Um, and Antoine First rounder. and Zach Watson and Daniel Cabrera. Uh, so you're, you're, you're pretty much just kind of wide eyed and just like looking at all these guys like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm playing with these guys. And I just sat down and watched every game last year, my senior year of high school. I watched these guys play every day and I was like in awe. I was like a fanboy almost. And now they're my teammates. So it just took me a little little adjustment to kind of like jumpstart my my mind. Uh, I pretty much had to change my whole entire mental standpoint and thinking and processing and all that stuff to stop trying to be too nice and trying to please everybody and start being kind of hard nosed and uh, a little bit of a douche. Um, not, right. not on, on the field, but in my mind, just kind no, of I know what you mean, on. right. You can't be like, Oh my gosh, like that's so-and-so because if you do that, you limit yourself. You can't ever like you, I guess you kind of forget like, no, I'm trying to take his job. Right. Like that's what I'm here for. I'm here to play. Exactly. I'm here to do my thing. Mm -hmm. um, kind of digging into your freshman year, you know, uh, the worst part about it was like, as soon as you really started to get going a little bit, that's whenever the thumb injury happens, uh, mm -hmm. kind of take me through that. Tell me, uh, kind of what happened. What was your mentality like while you were going through that? Uh, it was actually kind of crazy. Um, when I actually knew the, the minute that I did slide in the second base that I did something to my thumb that I wasn't gonna be able to come back from that game. Uh, but it happened in the first inning of that game, whenever I slid in the second, it was actually a bonehead play by me, uh, trying to be way too aggressive because it was my first hit in a clutch situation, you know, I scored Antoine from second base uh, in the beginning of the game, uh, a single up the middle. And I remember the outfielder throwing to the cutoff man. And I was thinking that I was the fastest guy in the world that I could beat throw out with no problem and uh, slid in head first. And I just remember my thumb catching the second baseman's foot and that was the end of it. But I ended up playing the rest of the game. Uh, I couldn't feel my thumb though. It was, it was humongous. And thank God I didn't get pitched to the rest of the game. I ended up walking, I think, every other at bat after that. There you go. Um, but uh, yeah, but after that, it was just kind of like a, a mental grind that I had to go through again. Like I was in high school, I feel like I never had a healthy season in high school and that was something that I was like used to at that point. So like it didn't really phase me. So I was like another, another injury, something I got to get through. So I just took it head on and kind of ran with it. Yeah. I mean, during that time you missed about two months, months, uh, kind of talked to me about the, about the rehab time. Um, I was actually texting you during that time saying like mm -hmm. probably about, you know, month and a half in, I was like, yo, like, when do you think you're going to be back? And I remember you kept being like, I'm pushing for Florida. I want to be back to play Florida. I want to be back to play Florida. So was that your kind of goal the entire time? Uh, yeah, they gave me a date. Um, it was like a six week uh, period that they they chose for me. Um, but in my mind, I knew it was gonna be five because I knew that I, could, I was gonna do what I needed to do to get my, my body ready. But they're pretty strict about their dates. So uh, I tried as hard as I could. And they really didn't let me get back to Florida. So I ended up coming back the, the following weekend. But I did everything I could and I was able to, to get back to where I felt more comfortable and I just felt normal again. So, I mean, kind of between me and you here and I guess everyone else listening, uh, do you think you might've come back too soon? Uh, no, I think I was good. I think you were hundred percent. Yeah. My body was healthy enough for it. Gotcha. Because like, uh, obviously you struggled a little bit. You couldn't really find your groove again. And then going into last season, start off a little slow and then you really caught fire and then a pandemic happened. <laughs> I mean, what was that like? Were you like, can I catch one break, please? Uh, well, 
I took the, the positives from everything that happened. Um, I really hate looking at negative things. I, I hate being a negative person. So whenever the pandem pandemic happened, we kind of just took the advantage of, of hanging out with everybody, um, just enjoying each other because we didn't know if we were ever going to have to experience this again or whatever. So we just enjoy each other's time with our teammates um, before everybody went home. Um, and then, honestly, I ended off on a really good note in baseball, so I just kind of took that and I just – took that into the, the time that I had by, by myself and my family in quarantine. And it really like motivated me, like uh, gave me confidence throughout the whole quarantine. So just taking the positives from that. No, no negatives, honestly, just, just running with that. Was ending on the positive note. Was that something you're like, all right, now I know I'm here. I can play with these guys. I can compete. I belong here. Now it's time to focus my craft. Now it's time to use this time to get even better. Absolutely. Because if I wouldn't have done, honestly, uh, if you look at it statistically, um, or just in general, if I wouldn't have done what I'd done it at the end of the season, I probably wouldn't be playing at LSU right now, honestly, because uh, obviously they had to make cuts and obviously they had to go through the lineup and pick people and decide who's who and who's going to stay. And that obviously helped me um, tremendously in my my ability for a coach asking me to come back. Um, and I believe that, that that really boosted my confidence. The coach saw that as well. So that's kind of a big reason as to why I'm still playing here at the Tigers. So what did you focus on during COVID? What was the one thing that you picked out, like, say, I need to get better at X, Y, Z? Um, well, me and Coach had an exit meeting that, uh, before we went home, and he told me that he wanted me to start, be the starting left fielder. Um, that's what I was focused on this whole entire time and during quarantine and all that stuff. I knew that if I, I did what I needed to do and handle my business, I was going to come back and I was going to be a starter, obviously. So that was pretty much my whole focus. I knew that Coach had trusted me and he believed in me, so I kind of – took that personally and I went home and I just had my focus on that. So. Yeah. We'll talk about a little bit about your uh, brief football career. So you went viral <laughs> a little bit on Twitter during co quarantine. Coach O still hasn't called me yet. I'm still waiting for that call. Ah, man. I got a buddy that's an equipment manager over there. I'll, I'll shoot him over the link. There you go. There you go. Um, well now you're finally healthy. Pandemic's almost gone. You're, as I said earlier, you're one of the best team. You're one of the best players, one of the best hitters on one of the best teams in the country. I'm not trying to pump your head up. Just statistically speaking, I speak facts. Um, talk to me what it's like really competing and dominating at pretty much the highest of levels and like what this is doing for your confidence. Uh, obviously, um, my confidence has grown a lot since I've been here. So uh, it's just it's just always a good thing just to be able to get up every day and know that you have a, another opportunity to play baseball. Um, like I said, I love looking at the positives. So that's just a bunch of positives that I try to take in every day and to keep my mentality right, my leadership right for the team, just all my goals. Um, I just keep them in front of me. Um, and we take it one day at a time. Everybody comes to the field. We ask who we're playing the next day and we're ready for it. So just like today, we had practice. We, we did what we needed to do. We went home and we rested. And we're going to come back tomorrow and practice like we did today and get ready for Mississippi State. So, Yeah, with uh, SEC play starting up, that was actually what I was going to go into next. Uh, the high talent in the SEC is just crazy. Looking at the AP poll that just came out, all five of the top five teams in college baseball are in the SEC. Eight out of the top 19 are in the SEC. I mean, kind of talk to me what it's like to play in this, like, highest level of conference. Like, there's never a weekend off. Like, every team can knock you off. So, what's it like going with that mentality? It's it's hard, I'll tell you that, but it's it's fun. You, uh, you, you would never want to be in any other conference or play in any other competition because it's the best you'll ever get. So, I love it. I enjoy it, and I crave it. So, I, I just want to – I'm ready for it. So I'm really excited for Mississippi State this weekend. We'll, we'll really see what we're made of after a three-game series with them. That's true. Do you all feel a little uh, little disrespected right now by the media being ranked so low? Uh, I guess you could say that. But uh, but we know who we are, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's ranked where. At the end of the season, we'll, we'll take care of our business and do what we got to do. Definitely. Does it show uh, – I guess, does it make you feel a little bit better maybe leaving a weekend series, you know, like uh, – we didn't play them to the best of our ability. You know, they might've got us this time, but we'll see them in the tournament or we'll see them, you know, in the college world series in Omaha eventually. Uh, well, we, we take one game at a time mind mentality. Uh, we, we kind of like decide to, we focus on one game and then after that game's over with, we completely move on to that. We can go to the next. So if that may happen, uh, granted, we hope it doesn't, um, we'll be focused on the next game and then the next game after that. So we just kind of, don't let one one game or outcome decide what we think and how we roll because um, we have a pretty good mindset as a team and a, a pretty good, I guess, camaraderie. Um, we're, uh, we're clicking pretty well, so we try to keep that going. 
Right. Talking about that one game at a time mindset, what is the expectations and like of the goals of the team that right now? Is it Omaha? Is it the College World Series? Is it being champions or what's going on with that? Uh, obviously, everybody's goal is to go to Omaha and win a national championship. I mean, you, you wouldn't come to college if you didn't want to do that. But um, we we just focus at one game. You know, we, we got in Mississippi State this weekend. Uh, we're ready for Friday, and that's all we're going to do. And that's all we're going to focus on until Saturday comes, and then the same thing for Sunday. So, Yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of this team, this team obviously has, like, a lot of fight. Uh, it never says die. Kind of going back to the UTSA series that we just saw. Um, is that something that's kind of preached around the locker room or is it like an unknown unspoken thing that everybody just says like, yeah, like we're going to fight until the end. Very unspoken. We, we just come in we handle our business when we need to, and we do, we got to do to win. So that's, that's as plain as that simple. It's going to get for us. And I, I think, I think we have a great, a great mindset as a team in that aspect. And we, we just show up and do what we have to do to win. And we, we, we're a bunch of, I'd say some dogs, uh, dog like mentality. We, we, we do, what we got to do so. Man, that's a, I tell you what, that's a good sign of good recruiting and good coaching if everyone in that locker room is of that mindset without it ever being spoken. Um, kind of going back to you for a minute, what are some of your goals after LSU? Do you want to play in the pro? Is your, your goals to make it to the MLB? Oh, absolutely. Um, my, my goal has been the same ever since I started playing baseball um, as a little kid. Um, and when I decided when I was like 12 years old or something like that, that I want to play college baseball, you know, I wanted to – I want to do this one day for a living, and uh, that will always be my goal until my body uh, stops me from doing that. So, there you go. There you go. Look, you should, basically, I guess everyone's goal whenever they start playing a sport is like whenever you're a little kid, like looking up on the TV and seeing somebody and being like, "Man, I want to be like them one day." Absolutely. So, who would be like that guy for you growing up, looking at them, like modeling your game after them, playing backyard baseball, or, like trying to swing like them, stuff like that. Uh, when I think about that, I think of, uh, there's two guys that I really like, uh, Kike Hernandez. He's a, he's a guy that really stands out to me. He plays everywhere. He loves the game and you can tell he has a lot of fun. Um, dude, the banana suit's great. He's doing it. Yes, <laughs> I know, but he, he really knows how to have fun. And that's something that I want to be able to do one day and just play at the big league level and, and be able to help my team win in whatever way they need me to. Um, another guy is Paul Goldschmidt. He's actually my, uh, my favorite player. He plays the game the right way and he just plays it hard. You know, he shows up every day and he seems like he seems like he just does the right things and he just keeps his head down and gets, gets the job done. I just love how polar opposite those two players are. He is like, like electrifying. He's like all over the place. He's hype getting in your face and Paul, he, you know, go he's going to show up. He's going to hit 280, 40 bombs every year and never say a single word. Like you're like, is, exactly. is he here? Um, so but was there anybody in the middle of that and I'll, and I'll run with that? A little sweet spot. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I bet you would sign up to be uh, somewhere in between those two guys, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, was there anybody growing up though that like really looking up to like as a young kid, saying like I want to be like them, or maybe did you not watch the game as much whenever you were younger? Um, I never really paid much attention to players. Um, I think there was one guy that I hit with. This was a uh, when I was kind of super young. Uh, just started hitting. Uh, with like hitting coaches and stuff like that. I was brought to a uh, uh, such a tiger cages in Baton Rouge or Prairieville. I'm sorry. And uh, I hit with Jake Slaughter one day and he was, re- he was recruited to go to LSU at right. the time he had committed and all that stuff. And I just saw how hard he hit the ball and yeah. it just like, it was like, Oh my gosh, like I can't, I can't even do that yet. Like what's going on. And then from that day forward, I, I just knew you can ask uh, my hitting coach, Ricky Grabear, uh back home. He, he was there whenever that's happened. He really, like, he saw it too. Like, I just, at, at that point or from that day on, I, I just wanted to be that guy that showed up and they're like, oh, my God, who's that hitting the cages down there? Like, and that's that's something that, that Jake did for me, and that's what I, I hope I can do for other players whenever they show up in the cages one day. Is that somebody you still have a relationship to, like, to this day, being LSU guys? or? Uh, yeah, I've talked to him a couple of times. Not, not as strong as it used to be, especially uh, now that he's playing pro ball. He kind of does his thing now. But, yeah, I talk to him every now and then. Man, that minor league life, that grind is no joke. It's a different type of grind. That's that is no joke. Um, who would you who would you say your game relates to the most? I have my answer. I want to see if, if we're around the same guy. I think I've told you this before. Uh I don't know. Uh I think I think my game's pretty pretty particular for myself. I don't uh I don't really ever think of myself comparing to to big leaguers or anything like that. I think my, I I kind of got my own little thing. I like that. Oh, man, be yourself. Um, I, I got somebody in mind. 
uh, stance is a little different, but like at the point of contact, it's very similar. JD Martinez from the Red Sox, you remind me so much of each other. He's like really? a student of the game, studies the game, goes about it the right way, doesn't really hear much from him, but he has a personality. Like when you really talk to him, mm-hmm. uh, that's definitely a guy that like you remind me a lot of. Respect. I like it. Yeah, that's a, I guess that's a good answer to uh, somebody that's, you know, hitting 40 bombs a year. That's somebody that's <laughs> good to be compared I'll to. I'll take like a person all day. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, okay. Another just kind of random fun question. What's the furthest you ever hit a baseball? I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Because in high school, you took a kid dead center and this was like your junior year. You were like just coming back from that hamstring injury and mm. you hit a ball dead center that kind of describing the field layout here. There was like this giant steel container, probably 20 feet behind, behind the fence. And then you hit it another 75 feet behind there into the ditch. I'm pretty sure that's the furthest I've ever seen a baseball. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, but that's etched into my brain forever. And I remember the kids after the game saying, dude, do you only eat cornbread and rice? Like what, what do you eat? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you that one. I really don't know, man. That's, but man, what is it like? Like, this is just me nerding out for a second. What is it like to just hit a ball like 450 feet? Uh, it's hard. You don't ever try to do it. It just happens, honestly. For me personally, I, I couldn't, I could never try. If it just happens if I catch the ball the right way, you know. So if you try to do it, you'll look pretty bad doing it. So that's that's something that if the barrel catches the ball the right way, the ball goes that way. So I mean, it feels is, good, and I'll tell you that. Is there anything that can even compare to it, like feeling wise? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Are you a are you a big launch angle guy or not really? Uh no. Just try to find barrels. Gotcha. Hey, that's good. All right. Uh kind of going in to the last question here. Don't want to take too much of your time. It's a question I ask all of my guests, actually. So it's gonna be a little loaded, just so you know. Okay. If you can go back and relive or live any moment in sports history, uh, you know, pre Gavin, you know, post Gavin, anything like that, what would you pick to relive? Oof. We've had a plethora of answers. Um, if you want me to tell you that while we while you kind of think. Yeah, go for that. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm down. It's definitely loaded. Uh, we've had one guy say he wants to see like a Walter Payton, like um, kind of just like a, like a Walter Payton game, just like one of his classic like 160-yard, two-touchdown games. Uh-huh. We had Michael Jordan's first championship. We've had the helmet catch. We've had, uh, we've had a lot of stuff. One guy even said that he wanted to go back to his high school state championship game. So – it's pretty wow. much anything you'd want to go back and just kind of witness. I think, uh, I think I could go. I would, I would want to go back to my, uh, my Cooperstown game, um, and watch that. That'd be pretty cool to watch in the stands, honestly. Just kind of thinking about it now. Yeah. How old were you? 12. Okay. So what, what did you do that game that you want to go back? Nothing. I just wanted to see how everybody looked. It, it was kind of, it's got, <clears throat> excuse me, it's kind of, uh, tough to, to see how everybody acted the game, you know, because I was on the mound, everything's behind my back. Um, I really wasn't paying attention much to other hitters because I was so in awe about what was happening. I, like, it's just like a weird environment for you mentally as a kid because we never played in front of that many people before. So, yeah, I would, I would like to go back and see that. It's pretty wild to go look at, like, Ted Williams' bust and be like, all right, guys, let's play five. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I love you just because of the fact that you play at – quite possibly the best college stadium in the world. It's probably the best college place. You play at LSU and you play Arkansas and you play Vanderbilt and you play Florida and you're like, you know, when I was 12 years old that one time, that was great. I, <laughs> I just, I just love the crowd's intensity. It was a, it was a different experience. And I, I love that. Yeah, I, man, I can definitely tell. Uh, well, anyways, thank you for coming on. Uh, good luck the rest of the season. Go in the championship for us over here. Absolutely. I appreciate teams. it. All right. Well, go enjoy the rest of your night. Have a good one. And thanks for coming on. You too, brother.